So welcome everybody. Um, I will now do a quick tutorial on how to specify the steady state of a DSG model. Um, for this, I will take um, the um, standard real business cycle model. I have uh, in the show notes a link to the model description, the first order conditions, and also how to compute the steady state. That is find a recipe uh, how to uh, sequentially compute the steady state. Uh, the trick here is to provide ratios in terms of labor um, steady state, and then it depends on your um, utility, like the functional specification of your utility function, whether or not you can actually um, analytically derive this in closed form, or uh, you have to rely on, say, numerical um, per, um, solver. To, to get steady state labor. And once you have that, of course, everything else is computable. Okay, so now um, let's write a Dynair uh, mode file. Okay, um, so I um, increased the font size. So I have uh, variables for output consumption, capital labor, technology, real interest rate, real wage, and real investment, one shock, and those parameters. Um, very important uh, or good advice is not to use actual numbers like beta, because there's a beta function in MATLAB, which uh, confuses uh, Dynair sometimes. Um, then let's do a base, uh, some, some calibration. Um, let's write down the model files, uh, model equations. Um, I use this UC as the marginal uh, utility of consumption. Um, and UCP um, at the marginal utility of consumption at period T plus one, marginal utility of labor, and then you have your Euler equation, um, your uh, labor supply um, equation, the capital accumulation um, equation, market clearing, um, the Cobb Douglas production function, labor demand, uh, capital demand, and the AR1 process for. Uh, technology and let's uh, save this file as rbc um, lock utility so this is that mod um, this is the lock utility case where we can actually compute the steady state analytically and for this um, it is um, possible to to use the so-called steady state model block okay let me introduce that to you. So steady state model, then you can actually do what we did on paper, um, derive sequentially the steady state. Okay, we know we, we that for technology, if we have an AR1 process in, in the logarithm, uh, steady state will be one. We know from the Euler equation what the um, uh, steady state interest rate will be. We, we know from the capital and labor demand uh, equations that there, the capital labor ratio is in terms of A and R also constant. Okay, we know what the steady state value for wages will be and for investment to labor share, output to labor, consumption to labor. And now we have, to, once we find labor, we can actually get C, I, K, Y. Okay, so this is like a recipe or what we did on paper. So in this case, we have log utility, there's actually closed form. Uh, expression which I can put in here all right and then I can call Dynair let's see Dynair let me save that RBC lock util oh. I'm using um, the stable 4.61 version and there you go okay and it found the steady state okay not much happened and happened here all right okay Fine, given the calibration we have here, this is our steady state. Okay, now, um, if you, let's, let's go to the case where there's not a lock utility, but there's actually, um, let's open up a new one, um, the uh, CES, CES uh, utility function, um, where we have two more parameters. Okay, let me quickly go back here in the model description. So this function here, okay, we have, eta c and eta l okay so um let me 
put down my model equations. And what changes, these are actually completely the same for the RBC model, okay? Everything is based on marginal utility of consumption, marginal utility of labor. What changes are, of course, the um, marginal utilities of the functions for that, because now I have eta C and eta L. Um, if we set those two to one, we're actually back in the log utility case. All right, and then um, we also want to use this steady state model block, okay? But there's a problem now. Of course, we can't do this. We don't have a closed form expression, okay? Closed form expression for labor is not possible here. Yeah, so what we do, we write, uh, we have all other expressions in closed form and we can reuse them. So the only tough thing to do here is to, to um, run a numerical solver to get labor. So we need, and for this, we need a helper function. Okay. And let's call this helper function. Um, let's give it a starting initial value. Okay. And this helper function, let's call this CES1 steady state helper. And for this, we will need some inputs, okay? I have to think about these. Okay, so we need to create, um, or let me first save this here as rbc cs1.mode, okay? And we want to compute the steady state here. Okay, so we need to create this helper function. And if you have a look at the, um, if, if you do this on, on, on paper, what we can come up with is this equation here. Okay, and given some, some consumption over labor, some wage level here, we have to try many else to, to get uh, this equation here. And this can be used with numerical, um, uh, with a numerical solution algorithm. So let's um, write this helper function. So let's call this RBC CS, um, what did I call it here? CS1 steady state helper. And I can set some options for my um, numerical solver, which is F solve in this case. And this is the equation I want to put to zero, um, given an initial value and given some options, option set, you, you're free to choose whatever you want. Okay. And this is not a mode file, but a MATLAB file. Okay. All right. So what are the inputs here? Okay. Let me copy this over. Save. And run this. CS1. And it works. Okay. Here you can actually see that F solve was used. Okay. Completed. And we have a, our new steady state results. Okay, and this is the recommended way because mo most of the times in your DSG models, there are many, many, many variables which you can um, derive the steady state analytically. Um, so mo most of the times there are like maybe just a few variables where it's not that clear to you or you're not able to solve these analytically. And for those, we can create helper files, okay? Um, you can call these whatever you want. Um, those are MATLAB files. Um, as inputs, uh, you can also put everything that is above here. So everything here, what you defined, declared, um, uh, you can use as inputs into your helper file. Okay, so this is the recommended well, um, way to, to um, write your um, steady state with... Um, where you not where you cannot do everything analytically. Another way is actually to have full control, which sometimes is necessary, and most of the times this is the, the best way to go. But sometimes you want really full control of your steady state computations. And then there has checks, okay, whether or not the steady state is actually found or not. So this is this is fine. Um, and for this, let me open up a new mode file. Um, let's delete the steady state model here completely. Okay, so the, we only have 
Um, this and let me call this RBC CS2 that mode. Okay, if you want to have full control of your um, steady state computations, then you actually need to create your own MATLAB function that computes the steady state. Okay, this function needs to be called, it needs to have a special name, it must be your the name of your mode file, which in my case was RBC CES2 underscore steady uh, state dot m. Okay. And this function has a certain structure or recommended structure. Okay. First, it needs some inputs and outputs. Okay. So the inputs are uh, the vector of initial values for the steady state, maybe um, if you're not in a stochastic but a deterministic context, the vector of values for the exogenous variables, then m underscores your denier model structure and options underscores denier op options structure. And it outputs three things, the, the new steady state endogenous variables, um, maybe um, some parameters are updated, uh, there are some, some cases where this happens and a flag check um, this is zero if everything works fine and it is one if not okay then air can handle cases or it will say you're you're drawing from the prior or, um, and checking whether there's actually a steady state and then Dynair uses this flag to say no there is no not a steady state you can't use this uh, for say an estimation a estimation or simulation Okay, and then this, um, there are um, at least, uh, let's say, four steps to your own steady state file. Um, I, let me call this step zero. Initialize the indicator, so check equals zero, and maybe set some options you need. And for me, most of the times, uh, I use um, options for the optimizer I'm concerned with, uh, so you can set them here. Then, very importantly, um, you can basically copy this command over read out the parameters to access them with their name. Internally, Dynair transforms everything, um, so, so alpha, beta, gamma, and stuff like that, you declared in the mode files actually params um, one, two, three, four, etc. okay? So, and we want to access these, and there's a simple loop which runs over the names and compares the names and gives you access to this, okay? Then, what you can do, um, Sometimes this is like you want to have full control of your steady state computations. Maybe you are aware that uh, for some parameter restrictions there is no steady state and you don't want it there. Uh, you, you know maybe the, the optimizer finds something, a fixed point, but there you know this is not, um, not possible. So say for me, uh, I don't know, if the product of those uh, two elasticities is less than one, then this is a weird model for some, this is, I mean, this is artificial now. So I, I set the check to one and just return the function and that's it. Okay, with without updating ys or params. Okay. All right. Um, then um, the step three is the actual crucial step. Okay. This is where we um, where we will now enter the model equations. Okay. All right. Or the steady state or recipe. Okay. We have of A, R, and um, we know these um, analytically, but again, you have full control of your uh, steady state computations. You can also say, hold on, whether if this is uh, less than zero or zero, this does not make sense, so stop, okay? This is not, for this parameter set, we don't find a um, steady state. Okay, and then you might keep going and you do some stuff in this case. And again, okay, I have full control. Also, I do not want to use the optimizer because maybe it is very time consuming in, in a very large model. And if I already f um, find out that now this uh, consumption over labor is uh, negative for some case, this is not um, possible. Um, so I will return the check to one. And then the labor. Um, I have full control, so I can actually have a look at at whether or not the, um, there is a closed form solution. Okay, so if 
this is equal to one and this is also equal to one. This is like a uh, lock utility, all right. And else I can run my F solve routine, okay? So else there's no closed form solution. Let's put in a uh, initial value here and let's say one third and this will use F solve uh, this anonymous function to get this to zero to find my L. And again, I can use a exit flag here. Um, and if this exit flag is less or equal zero, then something went wrong. I did not find a good solution. Perfect. And then I return. Okay. And then the rest, I need to set all endogenous variables to some value. And that's it. Okay. So I have set now all endogenous variables have a value now. And then the last step is to, um, you can basically copy this part here, update parameters and variables. Remember, we um, the function outputs ys and params. So we need to, to um, in, in some cases, the, the steady state file changes param parameters. So we need to update these as well. Okay, and this will uh, do so, um, these two. So basically, if you um, try to, to write your own steady state file, which I don't really rec recommend, but okay. Um, then you can like have this um, like sort of a, um, a recipe. So you can just copy this over um, and then you can think about what are the parameters restrictions, which you can, I mean, parameter restrictions, you can use the estimated params block for this, but uh, sometimes there are some weird parameter restrictions, which you can uh, take care, take care of in here as well, and then enter your steady state model recipe. How do you want to compute the steady state? Okay, and then the last step is also very important. Okay, note that I did not use any global variables. Okay, so because in the new Dynair version, and there's a very good reason for that, um, we uh, removed the global stuff. Okay, we uh, prior to 4.6 m underscore and options underscore were global in the steady state computation computations, and there are many um, teaching materials and papers where actually this messes up your steady state computations and they are wrong. Okay, so this is better. Okay, now let's see. Um, let's go back to our mode file. Okay, again, this file needs to be called, it has the same uh, name as your mode file, underscore steady state. Okay, and let's run this. So Dynair RBC CS2, bam, everything worked fine. Okay, oh, before I um, leave, there's of course um, the, the last resort on how to compute the uh, steady state file. Um, let's um, open up another mode file. Let's call this init wall. Okay, so if you don't um, have a helper file uh, is underscore steady state file. Uh, Dynair is using a numerical algorithm. Okay, this is the init val way. So and you can provide in this block initial values for the um, solution algorithm. There are actually many options to the steady command where you can have a gradient based or a simulation based um, or the CMA ES uh, algorithm. Um, so there's basically this option solve algo some number and you can change that to whatever um, is best for you. Um, and there's also some other options. Have a look in the menu, uh, the manual for that. Okay, so but uh, just to have this, what the uh, init val block does uh, for all your endogenous variables, you may specify. Um, initial values the opt uh, the numerical algorithm uses. So let's say if you don't specify a value, then it assumes zero as a value. Okay, so let me do this real quick. Um, Dynair RBC init well. Um, or if you don't have let's let's put it this like this. Then Dynair uses zeros. It looks like you found a steady state, but if you call the resit command, this is actually using the steady state values, putting them, in, plugging them into your equations, 
and giving you the residuals and there are NINs. Okay, this is of course bad. Okay, so basically what you want to do is you want to change the initial values to something. Okay, and here of course you need some uh, insight on um, maybe a, a simpler model. Okay, so let's let's run the for instance RBC log utility case. Okay, and there we have these steady state results. So let's use these as our initial values. Okay, 1.2 for the more difficult case, 0 0.9, capital 12, uh, labor 0 0.35, technology 1, uh, 0 0.03, uh, 2.25 or 2.4, investment 0 0.3. Okay. And now let's run the init val, um, and you get the new steady state results. Okay, so and the residuals of the static equations are also all zero. You want this, okay? All right, thanks. All right, good. Um, I hope you found this um, video useful for your research or for your exercise uh, and. If you have any more questions, please let me know uh, in the comments or write me an email. If you want any other uh, tutorials, um, please let me also know. Have a good day.